Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wild. So, Steve, who are you here with? Uh, I'm here with uh, Adam <laughs> and Jesse. We got on Jordan's. <laughs> what are we going to do today? We're going to like. Get in. <laughs> that was a really good start to the show. It was. I, I thought so. that, that was a very good start to the. No, wait. No, no. Sorry, we can't. Sorry, we can't. can't. No. Did you stop. enjoy that? Did you all enjoy that? Yeah. That's a shame because we got to review it. I need. <laughs> I need confirmation that the show started. Uh, because it, it's heaven forbid we have a good time before doing we, what we before do. Before we get to that, no. Would you like to hear some good news? Uh, sure. Before we get to the goal. Yeah. Before we get to the not golden goal. No, the goal. <laughs> Emily, cool. Emily Munson. Emily Munson. You might not remember that name, but Emily Munson uh, DM'd me on Instagram, and she said, Hey, Adam, today I, I was at a job interview, and one of the questions was the podcasts I listened to. Uh, the interview was with a digital marketing ag- agency, so I, lis- so I mentioned I listened to a hockey pro- podcast. The interviewer said, which one? And I said, the SDP. He asked me to describe it, so I told him it was three Canadians, one who yells about the Maple Leafs while his two friends watch and occasionally chime in. I hope I get the job. Peace and blessings from New York. Here's how stupid I am. I was about to go, Adam, you've already told us that story. Right. <laughs> you're you're yes. following up on it, right. aren't you? Okay. So, <laughs> I get a message this morning at 7.32 a.m. In all caps, I got the job! Yay! There you go. Oh, wait. No, she gets a call back. Uh, oh, your job sorry, is under yeah. review. <laughs> sorry, we need to make sure you didn't interfere. I just thought no. it was kind of cool that we've ca- crossed the thre- threshold of put them on your resume and you might get a job in digital marketing. I, I feel like it might have gone, hmm, she answered the question. I'm certainly not going to research that. And, and they she just did, gave her the job. She answered the question and didn't say cereal. What, what do you like, mean? Like, what podcast do you listen to? It's like cereal. Oh, Adam. Oh, I was thinking Adam. cereal. Oh, oh, do you know people what? not listen to I'm cereal gonna anymore? This. I'm going <laughs> to... Okay, I clearly need it. Because that's what? my second ch- flub already. He chugged, he chugged coffee, but it's not done. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I, I thought, don't want to go too crazy. I mean, I thought, I thought to chug, you were supposed to finish it. What are you doing? Yeah. Fine, what, did, what, did you never go to university? All right, everyone listening. Steve is chugging Gulp. coffee. Gall Parter. Gall Parter so we can hear it. Come on, this is radio. Oh, there, oh Was God. it ninety percent milk? Is that why you're? Able no, to it's just it? uh, I bought it in Scarborough, so it's mm. not hot anymore. They cool. Make bad well, coffee in Scarborough. <laughs> when I'm bouncing off the walls in five minutes, it'll be your fault. All right, so um, <laughs> don't know what to make of this. Before we get to the goal, let's just be <laughs> you honest. Know what you signed up for it. Just <laughs> let's just be honest. What Arizona deserved to win that game. Yep. 1,000% they deserve to win that game. The Leafs yep. did not play well despite... Listen, I'm the one that loves the advanced stats, and I know Stephen Birch was going, well, wait a second, they won on the power mm-hmm. play. They deserved it. They deserved it all the I way. Love Birch, but, uh, wait a second. Has anyone taken into account... And then just hieroglyphics. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone taken into account what, uh, I don't know, some pharaoh said 3,000 years ago about the Leafs? <laughs> Stephen Birch could recreate the uh, the pyramids if he felt like it, but he doesn't. He'd rather analyze the Leafs. And the pyramids I think are actually good. Th- pyramids are actually good. <laughs> yes. That's good. No, and you know what? He might be right. They did win the game on the power play, but the fact of the matter is they, the Leafs kept taking stupid penalties, yeah, which no, led to the power plays. Here's the problem, and, and a lot of people were freaking out about the loss, and, oh, their first loss in seven games, and, oh, are we really going to freak out about that? The reason you can freak out about this loss is because this loss looked identical to every game of the Leafs for the last three weeks. They got outshot to bloody hell in the first ten minutes. They ended up redeeming redeeming themselves somewhat, but still ended up getting outshot on the game. Mm -hmm. And they took more penalties than their opponents while allowing themselves to get bailed out by Freddie. What is different? What is different? This 4-1 loss to the Coyotes was identical to their 6-0 win over Montreal. That's what's concerning. It's there. There are waves. There. There are. I, I, I don't know what I'm going for. What the word is, but a little. Are you seeing bounce. a pattern here? Yes, but what I'm saying is cyclical. That, that, oh, it's definitely cyclical. But there are little bounces here and there. You can catch a team. Uh-huh. The, the Leafs caught Montreal. Okay, they they. I'm trying to and remember. Montreal's not very good. No, and they're not. Very they're good. lacking depth. Who got I mean, the first goal? I'm trying to remember. Wasn't it on the power play yesterday? No, against Montreal. Oh, against Montreal. Uh, trying to remember now. Because Kadri got that first one. Yeah. Yep. Ah, whatever. It doesn't matter. 
So the first one goes in, and you mm-hmm. see the wind come out of Montreal sails a little bit. Kadri scores that wicked shot on Charlie Lindgren. Wind, like, just completely gone. They didn't even show up for the third period. It was pathetic. And Connor Brown scores early. There was a scoring chance before that. On all Saturday, the first 30 seconds. Hainsey scored first. Ah, that's right. Ron Hainsey puts one on from the point, and it squeaks through. They didn't really get that in this one. And instead of having Freddie completely bail them out of their he garbage only, start. He only partially bailed them out. He only 90% bailed them yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Like, he did allow that early one. Like, we we talk about the, the first game of the season. How on God's green earth did the Leafs come out of the first period with a 3 nothing lead? I'll give you an answer. Steve Mason's crap. Or at least he has been. He's definitely been crap. Uh, every game, there seems to be a pattern. Babcock... Hammers it in, hammers it in. Uh, why won't this team start on time? Uh, I, I'm not going to put it on the coach, but the coach has said the same thing over and over and over again for a while, and it hasn't been fixed. That's concerning. Well, no, it's not, Steve. It's twenty. It's twenty games in, and you're talking about guys who oh. are no, 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 no. Trash starts. Seriously, trash. I get it. But and and I think Justin Bourne tweeted this perfectly last night. Mm, yes, he said Babcock's challenge is getting a bunch of kids. To get up for a bad team. And I'm sorry, Coyotes fans can admit that... They know. They know. Well, they know what's up. What I and I, I think that that's the problem, is that you... This is part of the growth experience, mm-hmm. is, is taking every game seriously. You can't expect um, Austin Matthews, William Nylander, Mitch Marner, Connor Brown at all to be a grizzled Mike Babcock brain at 19, or 20, or 21. As much as you'd like to... Name one. Name one person who's like that. And I don't think I've found, I don't think I've seen players or people more driven than athletes at that age. And yet they still have growth. So I feel like this is a maturity thing as much as it's a they didn't show up thing. Well, I think the two are linked. It's a maturity thing. It's get up for every game. Because those two points, uh, those two points, man, down the road, they're going to matter. They're going to matter. I mean, the two... Two points was the difference between the Leafs making and not making the playoffs last year. The Leafs had a hot start to the year, and now they find themselves in the exact same position uh, as they found themselves in uh, after their hot start. No. They're, I, they're yeah. on a six-game winning streak. Yeah, because they have won six of the last What were they, six and one, seven and one? They're seven and three. They were seven and two, and, man. And, uh, I think they were seven and two before they were seven and three. Well, they're seven and three, to, uh, like after last night's loss. Yeah, I mean, listen, they're six and zero oh previous. No, how no, they lost? Here's sucks. what I'm talking about. Here's okay. what I'm talking about. So they started incredibly hot. Okay, took some games for granted. Yeah, and then their schedule got hard. And what happened is they, I think, went two and six and came within one game of five hundred. Then they got hot again, and now. The schedule is about to suck again. I'm not saying they're about to go on a complete downturn. Mm-hmm. That's that's not what I'm saying at all. But it looks similar. Look at the Leafs' schedule coming up. It sucks. But a team that's month, six and sucks. one is hot. Yes. Okay. Oh, I agree that they're hot. Okay. <laughs> I agree that they're hot, but they've been in this position before already in this season. Mm-hmm. Twenty. Two games in, 21? Yeah, but you can't expect them every seven games to go six and one. No. 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 I know that. I know that. What I'm saying is they've already taken a hot streak for granted once this year. Okay, let me throw this out to you. If the Leafs were in the Western heading Conference... Into a, heading into a trash schedule. Leafs are currently third in the Eastern Conference. If the Leafs sure. were Not in, good enough! If the Leafs were in the Western Conference, they would be in second. Wow. Okay. I think there are probably 26 teams who would gladly trade records with oh, them. So let's keep that in perspective. You know what's Is crazy? it a good start to the season for the Leafs? Yes. 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 14 okay. and 8. Thank you. That's and they don't I even have to... any Bettman losses. I'm becoming no. <laughs> I'm becoming what I criticized for years with the Canucks. And, and, and with over the small things. Yes, they're good now. So I just have to criticize the minutia. <laughs> How funny... <laughs> What? How interesting would my videos be if every game I was just like, boy, that was good. That was good. Or if after every loss, I'm like, but the record. That would be everything I hate about good fan base. Hey, look. D- okay, you beat us on the scoreboard tonight. Look at the standings. And I'll make some jokes about, oh, the Coyotes are in last place. And, oh, they should be called the Glendale Coyotes. And how many people show up to your games? If no, I'm Leafs, not going to do that. If the Leafs win a Stanley Cup, yes. God forbid. 
God forbid. <laughs> Why did Every, you make me chug that coffee? Remember that first article after the, the day after the Leafs win the cup from Steve Simmons will be mm. why the Leafs won't win again next year. Mm. You know that, that he just got game. that written and waiting. Every LFR. Leafs the win next, the worst cup. <laughs> for the next 82 games should be, doesn't really matter. We won the cup last year. That's oh. what your LFR should be. Well, that'll be, like, I'll just have to take the year off and, like, backpack the world <laughs> and, like, discover myself. We'll come back with, like, a big... Jim Carrey beard, and yeah. all of a sudden... Because be, your purpose in life will be fulfilled. Yeah, I'll be super woke. Everyone will forget that I was oh, anti-vax. You know and just be like, need, oh, remember the mask? Sorry. You need to travel. Like, you need to travel. Yeah. Travel. You just need to, like, find yourself. Yeah. You just need to go to, like, Italy and have some gelato, and then, like, everything's cool. Yeah. You just need to, like, you know, right? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> everything's good in Leafland. Yeah, I'm happy. Yes, but the they got they got out, they got out by, played by a team that wanted it more. Yeah, a team that's not very that's, good though. Yeah, that's the bad part. Is what? I, oh, okay. The Leafs have been fantastic, and yes, so many teams would gladly trade places with them. However, here are some concerning things I noticed, and also, uh oh, the schedule looks bad coming up. That's worth pointing out. I think yes. I, I agree, Steve. Totally agree. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you there. I just maybe he is. You know what? I'm disagreeing. I think <laughs> the schedule is easy, and I think. <laughs> Listen. Oh, I really pinched my finger when, in the oh chair God. there. When you are, <laughs> when you are among the top five teams in the league, which they are, um, on paper and most you're in practice. I think. On yeah, on paper and, and in practice, points wise, they're a top five team. Okay. Yeah. Every every game is going to be easy. Right? Pretty much every game. Should be. Should be. Should be easier. Try! So, so, All I'm asking is that the millionaires try. So I just think <laughs> I just think you ought to let the millionaires off the hook because everybody's entitled to a bad night. It was a Monday night. It was a stinker. It sucked. They were all at BMO yes, on Sunday. Yeah, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. It was the damn CFL. Yeah, I saw Marner with a Bud Light in his hand. Apparently, uh, oh, apparently really? Mike, no, Mike Babcock, <laughs> obviously a huge Riders fan, was out sitting in the cold while yeah. the other guy, the guys that were, I think Marner and Martin were there. Matthews. Matthews, yeah. they were all up in the box. Yeah. And I guess Babcock gave him hell for that. He was like, oh, you got to go there and tough, the, tough out the cold. And I'm like, it's you know what, Mike? Nah. <laughs> no. Nah. I know you're from Saskatchewan, but nah. Like, let's I'm, not let's not pretend being cold is fun. I went no. to the season opener for TFC one time, like, totally unprepared. Like, the Centennial Classic, I at least, you, you know, I wore my Michelin Man outfit. Yeah. And was all ballooned up. I went for... <laughs> yeah. That wasn't that time. That was uh, Drew Doughty Day. No, the Sonnet thing, where he's wearing the big puffy jacket? Which one's when yeah, you're no, meeting Doughty? Oh, that's when I had the uh, extra large golf shirt. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. I know I used that picture. The picture that's <laughs> the red shirt. Please, can you that be the cover photo on this? On this the other show? embarrassing yeah. picture. The Michelin Man one is that was Antonio. So at least I was bundled up, but no, I went to a, a season opener for TFC. Please show both sweater. pictures in the video, so at least people know what we're talking about. I was just in the middle of a story. It was just, it just wasn't a good one. Sorry, Steve, I go ahead and tell your story. <laughs> You're a dick. Put your thumb down. No one likes your thumb. Screw your thumb. Anyway, it's cold. But that's got to be hard for Matthews. What were you talking about? I was trying to get to the point that it's Matthews, cool. other than being on the ice, is probably like, yeah, being cold is balls. Yeah. So oh, he's like, yes. I'll go inside. And, and you know, BMO Field has this luxury of being down by the lake so and no buildings surrounding it. So it's like the one spot in Toronto where the wind off the lake really whips you. Ooh. And it yeah, comes in and it like comes the across the stadium. And I, I was there for a TFC playoff game last year in the uh, quarterfinals, and it was so cold, so cold, so much fun. And the and they uh, TFC won, so it, you know made it good when you're jumping up and down. Hallelujah! Um, they should have reviewed the game-winning goal, though. So okay, should have reviewed it. I'm of two minds on this goal. Mm. I believe Steve is of one. What are your thoughts on Austin Matthews not? Goal in his 100th NHL game. Glad you asked. And maybe I can, uh, no, though, that's a bad picture, too, Jesse. <laughs> it's really it's like me on my cell picture. phone. Uh, Myrtle? Oh, that's terrible. It was either Myrtle or Chris Johnson. I think it was Myrtle. Uh, anyway, so I took five screen grabs and put them in my video today of the Hyman incident or lack thereof. So, okay, the goal is disallowed. What 
was the problem you guys had with it is what I want to know. Because I want to know if it's the problem that most Leaf fans had with it. Jesse, can you put the pictures <laughs> away for a second? Did you find the sonnet one? <laughs> I know, it's a terrible picture. <laughs> it's a terrible daddy. picture. What were you doing in that picture? I don't know. I just <laughs> saw them taking my picture and made a stupid pose and... You guys are dicks. <laughs> it's like I'm a little teapot, Steve. Uh, uh, I will. I look short and stout. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, show the laptop to the camera and don't just insert it into the video, it's you dingus. It's real profesh. Yeah, um, super professional. Couple issues. Oh, couple oh, so I called you a dingus. Did you know that I'm 56? <laughs> couple issues with yes, the play. And, and uh, I, I, a couple issues with the play. For, first is that clearly Anti Ranta got speared. Yes. Clearly. Yes. The problem I had with it is he wouldn't have had uh, the Coyotes' defense not pushed him into anti-Ranta. Thank you. This... It, w- it wasn't that he was speared and had plenty of time to get back up, which I saw a lot of Leaf fans say. This wasn't as egregious as Jonathan Quick, who literally gave up on the play and intentionally left the net yes. to avoid responsibility for you know being a goaltender. Like That was a mockery of the sport. This is, I just think, a blown call. Um, it's as simple I had a second as issue, though. What was the second issue? Second issue is that Anti Ranta did have time to get up ah. and make the save. And, ah. and, and hang mm. on, he had two Mississippi. Is that long enough? Mm. Fuck yeah. Well, okay, know. if that's not long enough, then then, then then that then literally you call the play dead. <coughs> and that's my but problem. The ref didn't see it as the how problem. long? It's, how okay. long? before the goalie is considered back in the play because he went from one side of the net to the other side of the net. He had two seconds to do it. Two seconds as a goalie is a lifetime. Are you kidding me? Mm. This is, no, 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 no. This is, he was in position to make the save. And had he made the save, would they have reviewed the save? Yeah. No, no, they wouldn't have reviewed the save because it would have been a save. And look at that. Wow. Despite getting speared, he made the save. I, that is, I agree with you that I don't think he would have stopped it regardless. No, I don't think I think I think he did get set. Um, but that wasn't the problem I had with the play. Because because people went, okay, would you look at it this way if it was Freddie? And I can't honestly say that I would. <laughs> I all your points are valid. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying there's a little bit of bias there for I, me. I'll tell you what my issue is. But I have another issue that I think is bulletproof. Can my, I can I sure. add this to the goalie recovering part? Yeah, sure. Yes. So this was from uh Katherine Silverman from the Athletic Chicago. Katherine, Jesse. Katherine, <laughs> sure. Katherine, you no, know, Katherine. Oh. <laughs> I know that's cool, man. <laughs> Do you have a problem with no, no, Katherine? No, no, that's cool, man. Do you... let me know what. Um, what's her name? Mathern. <laughs> she said, "My opinion on the Austin Matthews no goal." Adding that the onus there is on Hyman to be aware that he's blatantly restricting the goaltender inside the crease, not on Ranta to move around him and quickly recover. <laughs> There's a somewhat plausible argument to be made that it's a no call since the interference isn't occurring during the shot. But in my opinion, it's significant enough interference that you can't count the ensuing goal. Like there was, it looked like there was enough time to physically recover, but nowhere near enough time to regain sight lines in the play and reset properly. And that, to me, is the key in the ruling. Yeah, I, I sort of disagree, but I, here's my problem with it. The way they called it was the correct call. My issue is how it's called. Hmm. My issue is with the rule. My issue is with the gray area. It's not, it's not that the refs made the wrong call or the head office made, made the wrong call. It's the fact that if that happened to any team, if you're, if you're a Rangers fan and this happens to you, if you're a, a Panthers fan and this happens to you, you're going to feel totally blown by this. Yeah, Because I, it's not, uh, it, blow the play dead or don't. I That's just, the thing. Because how long, how long should the Leafs have had to dipsy doodle around with the puck before, okay, now Anti Rant is back and good now? See, this is the thing, though. The like, if he gets interfered with, it. if he gets interfered with, should he not put up his hand and go, I was interfered with? And, well, then, and then blow the call that because. But they, then what if they don't they call it? And then you're the still that's, that's a slippery slope. See, yeah. I don't want them to do that because then you're going to get what I think is probably going to be a growing trend. Forget players diving and yeah. and the cadre shoulder check. Goalies are going to be flopping all over the place. Don't make an attempt to save it. Why would you? Why would you? If you got bumped in the least, take the fall, act hurt, get indignant every time. Every single time, because if that is what's going to get called, with all due respect to Catherine, uh, I think we've... Catherine. With all due respect <laughs> to Catherine, uh, we've talked many times 
Uh, I disagree with her assessment. Okay, so I took five screen grabs, put them in my video. So, uh, and maybe you can put them into this. I don't know. Christian Fisher is pushing on Zach Hyman, who is breaking, not in the crease. Oliver Ekman Larson is backing up into the crease. Antti Ranta is just doing his thing. I have no problem with him. Oliver Ekman Larson's ass hits Hyman's stick while Fisher is still pushing him. Ekman Larson, why won't it continue? Ekman Larson continues advancing backwards. Fisher continues advancing forwards. Hyman is still breaking, still not in the crease. Now his stick is pointed at Ranta. Now that Ekman Larson has completely backed into him, Fisher is pushing him forward. And then the last one is where the stick finally makes contact. And Hyman is in the middle of a Coyotes defender sandwich. So the call on the ice was this was a goal. Then they reviewed it and found there was goaltender interference, which means they saw that and thought there was enough evidence to overturn the on-ice call. I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. What is Hyman supposed to do? What's Hyman supposed to do? You know, not be there in front of the net at all. I think they should just every all the shots should come from the perimeter. We should go to the NBA. Three points. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, like you, it's, you, it's, they, they will not call goaltender interference if it's found that a defender completely pushed a player into the goalie. What about the player's equipment? What about the stick? Because that's what happened here. That's what happened here. This wasn't a case of Fisher or Ekman Larson bumping Hyman completely into Ranta, but they moved his stick to a place where it wasn't going. Which resulted in Ranta getting poked. That, that wasn't Hyman's fault. But in the way that they currently call the rule, would you agree that... How do they currently call the rule? Th- the way they have been calling it, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised, uh, but it's wrong. Okay, <laughs> then your issue is like, the same as mine, which yeah, is, yeah. it's not it's not what they called last night, it's the rule itself that needs clarification, yeah. that needs gray area. There's a reason why That's they terrible. didn't attach a penalty... To goaltender interfe- inter- interference viewing calls because there's so much gray area Ugh. that they didn't want to. The, the general managers were like, "Well, we don't want to attach a penalty to those kind of challenges because that could be bad." I, I also wanted to see Babcock be a dick. I when when the Coyotes scored the three one empty netter, you should have reviewed it for offside. Just take the penalty. Like who cares? Just review it for offside. Oh. Waste their time. No good it's because I'm sick of this shit. This is terrible. Can I watch my sport? Can I watch it? When JVR scored the 1-1 goal, which is long before this incident happened, the first thing I did was look at the ref. It wasn't celebrate. Because if there is a your team jersey in front of the other team's net and your team scores, there's no point celebrating. Mm-hmm. Why? It might be a waste of energy. Matthews with the, yeah, that great moment. Fuck that. That's gone. Like, that's gone. This is what I'm talking. There's no point celebrating until the puck is dropped at center ice, someone said to me. This is, They're th- absolutely right. This is why... I'm, and I've said this before. Why did you make me chug that? I've said this before, and I'll <laughs> say it again. I think we have to allow for human error in these situations. If your entire focus is getting the call right all the time, then forget those moments. Forget them. And and and, and I mean that. This it, league sucks. <laughs> Can we just talk about how the NHL sucks? I would prefer not to. Oh, we do, we do talk about that. I mean, okay, so. If the rule's not right, then what's the right rule? I think it's clarification. It's fucking guy. I think, I think, I think the rule's correct. They just enforced it wrong. The Coyotes players pushed their opponent's equipment into their goaltender. What's Hyman supposed but to do right about now, that? But right now, Steve, that's what they're calling. They're yeah. calling no matter who made contact. Oh, that's or no shit. Matter how they, that's shit. I agree. I don't think that's the rule, though. Because you've, I've seen refs multiple times be like, oh, okay, well, the guy came in contact with the goalie, but he was shoved in. Because refs, I'll give them the credit. They have common sense. They have some common sense. I wish they would have used some here. Hyman's stick was not going into Ranta until it was planted into Ranta. I'm just not, I'm not a fan of the way they're calling it right now. I think that they, based on the history that I've seen in the first quarter of the season, I'm not surprised they made that call. I don't agree with the call. I don't agree with the way the rule is called. That's my point. You can't, listen, I I can't change the rule. I can disagree with the way the rule's yeah, I'm shocked though. that it was a goal on the ice, and they looked at that and went significant evidence to overturn. Absolutely not. Trash. Trying to read Rule 69 from the NHL rulebook. It's not a nice, nice. rule. Is it's it actually nice Rule 69? <laughs> <laughs> Under Rule 69, um, the goaltender interference is a penalty in ice hockey where a player is found in the goal crease when a goalie is establishing his position in the same area. Under Rule 69, this was, will result in a minor penalty to the offending player. So I guess that's not the 
won on a goal. No, if that's, a goal is so scored, Hyman got a penalty earlier in the season where he crashed the net mm-hmm. and entered the crease and just completely bowled over the goalie. That's legit. Mm-hmm. I think he got in, like an offensive zone penalty on the penalty kill, which I remember lambasting because yeah. how the hell do you do that? I would I would love to know their their reasoning for this. Why can't we interview refs after the game? No. Why? You can't do that. Why? You don't want people knowing the refs and stoning them and getting on Twitter and ranting about the refs. Oh my god, send a tweet. Send something. Explain the shit. Or it, you're just going to have unhappy fans. If it has happened many times, many times on the show and in videos where mm-hmm. I've been mad and seen an explanation and gone, you know what? You're right. Well, that's why I miss Brendan Shanahan's videos. Oh, how great were those, right? Did they do one for Kachuk yet? No, I don't think they're good. Uh, they do they do videos anymore? They just magically, mystically gave they, him a game. Do they do them anymore? I don't know. I don't think so. If they I do, seen they don't publicize them. Oh, I mean, I mean, it's not like the NHL is known for its transparency. Let's be straight about no, that. No, it's a great league. It's a great league. Always keeps their fans informed and happy. Have you checked out their website? It's great. It tells you everything you want to know. Hey, do you want to know who the leading scorers are by weight? They got you covered. Piece of crap. Did Hyman impair the goalkeeper's ability to move freely within his crease or defend his goal? I think his defenders made Hyman do that. Yeah, so not therefore, by the result no. of his own actions. It has to be, to me, it should be by the result of his own actions. Okay, so that's where... Th- that's my issue with the... There's but that's the why they're calling issue. it the way they're calling it, right? Yeah, because yeah, it's right. not clear on whether it is his own fault. It's just if a defender impairs the goalkeeper's ability to move freely, it's goal interference. If, if you can, like, I'm not even saying 100% for certain that Hyman didn't, like, I don't know, Sort of intentionally, oops, a daisy, do it, mm-hmm. accidentally interfere. But to watch that replay and say definitively, without a shadow of a doubt, there's enough evidence there to overturn the call on the ice. I that's shocking. I don't get it. I don't get it. That's terrible. It should have counted. Um, on on the issue of what the hell's going on here, mm. uh, Brian Lawton, who is a uh, an analyst, uh, former NHL player as well, former agent, I think. Yep, he's he's kind of done it all. I don't understand why every trade rumor he tweets about is objectively not true. And whenever he does, <laughs> you get guys like Bob McKenzie and Elliot Friedman coming out and going, yeah, no, that's that's not what we've heard. And those are the guys that are consistently correct. So yesterday, or the day before, I think it was, Brian Lawton tweeted about the Leafs being interested in OEL, Oliver ekman Larson, and William Nylander going the other way. Now... Uh, why the Leafs would do that? Why the Coyotes would do that? I'm not sure. I'm gonna go with why the Coyotes would do that. Yeah, I don't. Think- I love William Nylander, but uh, I don't know who could have watched last night and not been like, "Yeah, I'll take OEL." <laughs> Holy shit, he's good. He's amazing. Oh, he's but great. That's that's always. I, I don't understand what. Holy smoke! I'm, I don't, I don't even want to talk about the trade right rumor because it's not a rumor. I don't understand what the point of tweeting something like that is. When clearly, We're talking like, about how it. bad is your, no, well, but how bad is your source? Or do you have a source? Like, what's going on there? This is not the first time he's done this. What, were the, what was the exact wording? I'll look it up. Okay. Because I, I need to know. Was he reporting it as a rumor? He wasn't joking like Howard Berger. Okay. Uh, well, was Howard Berger joking if it isn't funny? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, joke's bomb. Uh, yeah. I will, <laughs> I will... You can trash him for the joke not being funny, but for people to talk about, like, oh, his reputation. Well, the problem was oh, is that reputation. all I did, I went into City TV the next day, and all I heard was from people going, who had heard about the article and going, the Leafs are going to trade Math Matthews, aren't they? Uh, it's going to be really expensive. Fault. That's their own No, fault. they're no. passive fans, yeah, Steve. They don't know. Hardcore, yeah. That's why they were asking so me. So they read the tweet and didn't click anything, no. and they just went, they heard <laughs> information. Steve, Steve, do you not know how things work? Oh, Are you new at this? I know how things work. People are dumb. And gullible. They're not dumb. They're gullible. Dude. They, I'm gullible. Sorry, man. They don't look at hockey like we do yeah. through a microscope. So when something like oh, that comes microscope out. microscope clicking the thing. All they saw was a tweet. Steve. All they saw was the title. These are people that are. Really, Steve? These are. D- dude. <laughs> I thought it was dumb, too, but he wasn't reporting it as fast. No, but if a casual person, like if, if your mom sees that, she's yes. going to be like, oh, my gosh, Matthews is being traded. Because and my mom guy? could be wrong. 
But you can't blame her for that. You should blame the source. That's true. I guess I wouldn't blame her for that. No, exactly. Yeah. But it's still her fault. I just wouldn't blame her. No. Does that make sense? It's his fault for making a bad article about it. it completely pointless. Yeah, it was pointless. Yeah. He should have waited for April 1st. I don't know Howard. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but what the hell, man? Come on. should have waited for April 1st. It, yeah, that would make sense in context. Exactly. That's something you, you could explain to your mom. Be like, oh, it's an April Fool's joke. This, oh, this guy was just trying to yeah. be funny. How do you explain that to a casual person? And should have waited for April 1st it wasn't or the funny. day that yeah. the Leafs played the Coyotes. Like, I think it would have made much more sense. Way more fun. Yeah. Mm. All right, here's the deal. <laughs> Poor Howard. Chatter seems to be picking up about OEL and the Arizona Coyotes. A couple of known insiders talking about William Nylander for OEL deal. So he's straight up reporting this as fact then. What a great deal it would be for the Maple Leafs. Obviously, on the flip side, it would be a disaster for the Coyotes as Elite D are a rarity. Shut up, Brian. If it is true, shut up. <laughs> Don't ruin this for us. Whatever, you narc. <laughs> stop, stop dumping on the Leafs party. So why did he make this up? Uh, no, I think, you know what? I hear stuff all the time. Uh, and I think the difference between really good insiders and others is really good insiders hear things all the time. And, and verify things. Yes, <clears throat> and do some investigative work. Um, like I'd Rather love- than just, you can't just hear it from one person and be like, guess what? I don't think that's good enough. I don't, that, that's not... Like, there, uh, journalism is spelled all lowercase when it comes to sports in many cases. There are a lot of journalists out there who... Journalism! Yeah, journalism! <laughs> objectivity! Which, I mean, Jesus, you just heard me yell and scream about how the Leafs and, got robbed of the And role. by the way, but, can I just throw this out there? Journalism is more than a degree. Journalism is a practice of values. Yes, and I've I've seen some of the best... At work, uh, and they they don't even let you know very much about what they're what they're doing. Um, they're they meticulous. Can't. They can't. They're meticulous, and they wait months and months, and they corroborate stories. And while they're trying to make sure something is actually true, that thing is also developing. So they need to follow the developments of it. Um, it's meticulous. It's hard work, um, and they take it really seriously. They don't just hear one rumor and just bust out their phone and go, guess what? <laughs> I had I had somebody tell me on breakfast television once we were reporting on an entertainment story, and they're like, you are a terrible journalist. They tweeted it at me. And I was right about a story. But, so am I. And, I. and what I told them was, I said, well, that's great, because I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I'm not a journalist. And they're like, well, what the hell are you doing on TV? I'm like, I I am reporting something, yeah. but I'm not a journalist. I'm I'm, re- I'm repeating stories that are coming out of various outlets. There is a difference between being a reporter and being a journalist. I Very. Think. I went to cover the Belleville Senators the other day, and I got to interview Andrew Hammond, the Hamburglar. I was reporting, uh, and I'm going to be honest with what I say, but like I'm not a journalist. Mm. You know what I mean? I think most people n- know my deal. Yeah, he, he's a Leafs fan. You know, who just... You didn't do any investigative work. You know? No, I just asked him, and I'm yeah. going to let you know what words he said. Mm-hmm. And they're real. Mm-hmm. If you don't believe me, I have the audio. Like, I'll throw it out there. But I, I don't know if that's Steve journalism, though. That's reporting. <laughs> Steve might be fake I'm news. not fake news! Andrew Hammond is a lovely individual. Fake news. No. He's a jerk. Not at all. What? He's a jerk. Did, did you give him any hamburgers? He gave me hamburgers. Did he? Really? Doesn't he get it for life from McDonald's? No. So I read uh, in the <laughs> Athletic that I was very sad to see. Also did a story on Hammond. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. Uh, they. Uh, he, nah, but he, nobody can see that. He you told pay for that. Yeah, exactly. wall. Yeah. I can't see that. Nobody. I'm gonna po- post it for free. <laughs> um, Hammond uh, <laughs> only got like a thousand dollar gift card for that. Oh, that's oh. so shitty. <laughs> I know. Come on, McDonald's. <laughs> I know. Ba da ba ba ba. A little bit disappointing. <laughs> But, I mean, how much is a pro athlete going to eat McDonald's? First of all, $1,000 at McDonald's. Like, that is a burger a day no. for three, three years. Yeah, for no. On the dollar menu. If you get, if you get like, six buddies. <laughs> the dollar menu. You get six buddies, two weekends, bunch of beers, you're done that. Well, maybe in your early it's 20s. Andrew Hammond! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Phaneuf likes hamburgers, too. Does he? I don't know. I know he likes Why lobster. You, you're fake news. He's hanging out with our, our friend Faisal. <laughs> Sorry, um, I took us all the no, way. No, no, I'm just, I'm just trying about? to figure out. This is not the first time this has happened from Brian Lawton, and I'm just trying to figure out why he's doing this. Mm-hmm. 
Now, is it just that he has a source that the source told him and he just checked that? Yeah, because no, because here's the thing. When this happens, especially with the Maple Leafs, and I, I'm sure it's the same with Montreal as well, when when that if something like that comes on, then I know guys like Elliot, like Bob, are like, okay, now I got to call into the lunchtime radio shows uh, and say, okay, listen, not true from what I've heard. There's, you know, Toronto really doesn't have an appetite to trade Nylander. Arizona doesn't want to trade uh, OEL, so I'm not really sure where that came from. Like, it must be exhausting. Yeah. That, literally, those guys spend 99% of their time going, no, that's not really a thing. Like, can you imagine? Yeah. Instead of, instead that's of going, the entire hey, story. hey, bro, hey uh, Bob, what are you working on? I'm trying to find the Fisher tweet uh, where he basically, <laughs> ah, shoot. He, he posts the Bob McKenzie article. He's like, I love Bob, but this is a lot of words to basically get to nothing to see here. <laughs> And it's true. Bob is one of the Mount Rushmore of hockey journalism. Elliot Friedman's the other. And, I, I mean, there's a few guys, but, like, he's got to be on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I feel bad when a guy who really puts in the time, just because something is the rumor of the day, has to go, ugh. So here's, no, yeah, here's the thing. Like, I have no <laughs> doubt that Lawton's tweet is based in fact. I just question... Based in fact that he heard it, or based in fact that they had conversations? Like, I I would bet. Like, okay, the Leafs management team must talk all the freaking time. Mm -hmm. All the time. So, yeah, you're calling oh, every everybody. team about their best defenseman, probably. Yeah, yeah. and they're probably going, all right, OEL, that guy's pretty good. What all would right, it take? so how would we do that? Exactly. I don't know, I uh, probably take, like, Nylander, and, uh, yeah. And I don't know, maybe that leaked out there somehow, or maybe it was from the other side. Maybe it's like an assistant GM. You can't GM. forget that these are also people, and people yeah. just like to just see what's out there. Yeah, shooting just, the shit, I believe. And just the shoot yeah, the shit. Shooting the yeah. shit. Like, oh, man, I bet the Leafs would really like to get their hand on OEL. Wow. <laughs> the only three way. other teams oh, that would also yeah, like yeah, to get their like, hands on him. In order for them to get him, they, I mean, <laughs> gosh, start with Nylander. <laughs> and then it's yeah. know, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Do you think, do you think Shirelli's ever had a drunk conversation where he's like, "What would I get for McDavid?" Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like I bet. How many first round picks are there? Like, yeah. it's, it's, like but you don't go and report that. It's how not like many? It. Okay. <laughs> I would love to know if Shirelli's ever gotten wasted and had this conversation. How many seventh rounders would you have to be given to get McDavid? Like thirty? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, Shirelli's king of the one for one, so it's one for one. Yeah, no, no, no. but you couldn't. We'll do take a one Shea for one. Weber for Connor McDavid. I, we should just get wasted and dress up as like different NHL GMs. And Dibs have, on Shirelli on, on conversation. Just have GM conversations. Yeah. I'll trade you. <laughs> but if you gave like fifty yeah. second round picks. I'd do that. Okay. Uh, yeah, for the next 50 years. For the next get, 50 years, you get um, your second round Nashville pick. second round pick. McDavid's I'll, gone. I'm I'll give him. you Mitch Marner for Connor McDavid. And? Was that not enough? <laughs> All right. I'll give you Super Saiyan Mitch Marner for Connor McDavid. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a question. There's a legitimate question. Is Super Saiyan Mitch Marner worth one Super Connor Super Saiyan David? anybody is worth more than anybody. No! Super crazy. Saiyan Super Alex, Saiyan Zach Super Ronaldo is Saiyan not worth Alex Connor McDavid. Burrows is worth not. more than Matthews. For, no, absolutely yes. not. That's yes. ridiculous. He's Super Saiyan. No. He's the <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not even. He's Super Saiyan. Are we drunk? Sound it. Probably. <laughs> Both of you. <laughs> All right, so listen, again, Not that I don't want to demonize Brian Lott, and I just want to figure out what the hell's going on boy, with him. Boy, did I get a lot of messages going, I don't like this Dragon Ball Z crap, and boy, did it not deter me from doing it one bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> it kind of made me want to do it more. One thing that we do know, yes. and that we're fairly clear on, is that the Oilers are looking for things. Oh. In the last couple weeks, we've heard... Should be a GM. We heard, we've heard the wing, we've heard uh, another center, we've cool. heard defense... Goaltending. He used to be GM of the Bruins. Screw that guy. <laughs> um, so I guess there are uh, there are rumors that Ryan Murray might be on his way out of Columbus oh, for Nuge. That Eric Johnson might be on his way to the Oilers. What, Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson. Sorry. Uh, what's the deal, Steve? <laughs> they because uh, Oilers Twitter is a Twitter. What's the deal? Uh, Shirelli's phone should be melting with incoming calls right now. Uh, because that is a panicky Pete of a GM right now, who uh, 
who is, seems pretty hell-bent on selling low on everything. Uh, loves one-for-ones. Uh, the two teams in the Western Conference that do not yet have 20 points are the Oilers and Coyotes. Oof. Oh, gosh. If the Coyotes win Oof. the next two games and the Oilers don't, the Coyotes will surpass them. Coyotes are three points behind them. Is it panic time? Do you, hit, do you hit the panic button now? The gap between the Oilers and the Canucks, who are the team just above them, is... Seven points. Five. Uh, five. Five. Five, five, five points. points. Math. Points. Math is hard. Math, math is hard. Trades are also hard. Um, wow. That's gross, man. The gap between St. Louis and Edmonton is 15 points. So, okay. And we are 20 games in. That's a big deal, 20 yeah. games in. The, the rumor from... Well, uh, uh, American Thanksgiving is what? In a this couple week. days? So it's almost not too early. <laughs> it's almost not too early and the Leafs play them twice coming up uh, look the the rumor from Dreger that sent Oilers Twitter just into a complete tizzy was uh, Oilers are looking for a defenseman well hasn't the thing everyone's been complaining about all season been that their forwards aren't good enough and they don't have enough speed up front so are you going to take away from that like are you going to trade a Nuge Mm-hmm. To get that defenseman, Taylor Hall would look real. Nice. Oh my God, <laughs> Eberle! Like, oh. Not Yakubov though. And it's not like uh, I, the one thing I'm glad Oilers fans haven't really done that much this season is blame the whole thing on not having Andre Sakara. Andre Sakara is a very good defenseman. Andre Sakara is not so good that not having him sinks your entire season and makes you one of the bottom five teams in the league. Maybe Shirelli, who has pretty much constructed this Oilers team, yeah. uh, has not done a good job. Like, this is the the thing with, like, Bergevin and Shirelli I see as being two GMs in a similar position. You now need to get yourself out of the mess you created. You created. You can't complain about inheriting anything. You, you know what you inherited? Connor McFricking David. And you're botching it. That's right. You weren't even the GM. I don't was did they hire him in time to draft Connor McDavid, or was it Craig McTavish that drafted it him? Wasn't it the same? Because Craig McTavish won the lottery and was like, yay! I think and he then won they got the lottery and then, and then got, got fired. like fired the next yeah. week. Oh, yeah. And then Peter Shirelli <laughs> had to make the just biggest Fisher Price slam dunk of his life. <laughs> just ah, just full grown adult male on a on a child's basketball net drafting Connor McDavid, and then I think he signed Lucic. Um, yeah, and then he had the whole offseason. The, the Hall thing. Larson trade, yeah. the uh, Eberly Strom trade, buddy. Also, buddy, but you're, last you're screwing year, up. They were very good. Yeah, they all were. it took was like a Vesna nominee goalie. And Often sometimes you get that. And that's how your team is going. Yeah, but that's that's. I not mean, the Kings good. snuck into the playoffs and won their first cup with a Vesna nominee goalie. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, they, Jonathan Quick, they rode him to the yes, finals. but it's Stephen Birch posted hieroglyphics that said he wasn't <laughs> No, good. I think Stephen Birch would agree with that. <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, but, <laughs> okay, Love you, Stephen. Here's, here's what's funny. I would never have expected, and I don't think anybody would have, that the 2015 Oilers and 2015 Sabres would be as bad as they are now in 2017. No. Oh, my God. Oilers are in second last in the West. Sabres are in dead last in the East. It's... Dead last. Jack Eichel is on the third line. Yeah, which is dumb crazy. because he's easily their best player. And then I love that Phil Housley came out. He's like, oh, he's a great player. does a lot of great things, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, come on, Phil. You know what happened 46 days before he was on the third line? They gave him $80 million. Ah! <laughs> 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 Ooh. So well, ball's in their court now. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, he gave up his cards as soon as he signed the contract. That is, um, we're talking about three teams right now who aren't good, and it's their own fault. This is why I'm I'm, I'm hesitant because I've said before I don't think the Leafs' defense is talented enough to compete at that level. It doesn't mean that they won't get there. As I said, Carrick had a bad game, but you don't, and and they're going to have bad games. Of course, it's not their strength. But the great thing about the NHL is that often teams win because they play to their strengths, not because they have your EA Sports NHL team, which has the best of literally everybody. What is the Oilers' strength? Uh, it should be goal scoring. It Why? should be. And speed. Because Why? their best player is the fastest player and the, probably the best player on the planet. And their second best player has the same characteristics. Yeah. Two guys. 
It's not enough. Jordan Eberle would have been a great compliment to that, I think. Um, not enough. You know who I would have traded? Before Everly, because you can. Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Not because, not because, here's the deal. You, you, you have a guy like that, and I know this is rewinding and this is pointless now. Sure. But you've got your top two centers, right? Unless you want to play the two of them together. But Dreisaitl and McDavid should be one and two. You can go out and you can get a, a, a decent center. You could have got Brian Boyle this summer. You could have got anybody. Could have got Tyler Bozak. Nick Benino. <laughs> could have got Tyler Bozak in a trade. I, I um, would like to know from Oilers fans, because like, uh, you know it's hard to follow every team this closely, has Dreisaitl been playing mostly wing or center? I think he's been playing with McDavid, hasn't he? See, if they just put him at center and let him develop there, like even if there's some growing pains, then you got a one, two, three. Of McDavid, Drysaddle, Nuge. No one's touching. I him. just my my thing is here's just an interesting point. If if you're the Oilers this summer, this last summer, and you're looking to unload six unload six million dollars, which they were with Eberly, instead of trading for a guy who's less good but also less expensive, why not move Nuge for a guy like Galch, or Nuge for a guy like mm, Duchesne? I don't know. I don't like that. Nuge is good enough or, for a Galch trade. Really? Oh. Yeah. Well, Ooh, I don't know about that. Especially because what is he making? Seven point five million? No, six. six, six, six million flat. They both were. Um, or like you know, or a Duchesne. Why were they not in on a Duchesne or something like? that? You know what I mean? Maybe they tried. Hmm. Maybe they did. I don't know. It just seemed it seemed weird at the time that you. That's your return. That's weird to me. Or when Jonathan Drouin was available, why didn't they make a harder push for, the, for the that? The Oilers right now are the kid whose parents gave him an apple for snack. Uh, trying to negotiate their way into Dunkaroos, and it's just not working. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. I believe me. Could they land I tried. For, could they land a fruit roll up? Ooh, James Neal is available, maybe, maybe. and it's going to cost them their 2018 first round pick. That's my goal. Whoa. James Neal. James Neal will be an Oiler by, by the, the way, season. No, Mm-mm. the the Vegas Golden Knights are going to be the team of the year. Uh, in that they'll They're easily be the most fascinating. They're doing great. They're doing so great that how do they screw this up? <laughs> no, it's the NHL, though. <laughs> they might find a way. They might find a way, but they're really... Greater teams have failed. Greater, yep. But, oh, believe me, I've seen it. But this team is on pace for having to try to miss the playoffs. Mm. And I don't know if any GM... You're George McPhee. You had the entire hockey world by the cojones. And now in your first season, by the you have an, by the cojones. <laughs> and now you by have an opportunity. By the despacitos. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> by the testaclitos. <laughs> and right now, you have an opportunity to have your name on, oh yeah, everybody talking crap about the team I built. Guess what? Playoffs, idiot. He's because I'm the- George McPhee. Make fun of my Philip Forsberg trade now. I just got an expansion team to the playoffs. <laughs> I don't know if any GM has the strength to hold themselves back from that. How do they sell? He built a bad team. <laughs> Bullshit. Look at the standings. That's how George McSh- uh, McPhee looks at it. Mm. As he should. As yeah, he should. But Belmar is clearly <laughs> a five or six million dollar star. <laughs> Like, dude, legacy, Vesna, Legacy, sorry. I mean, he's got the most wins in franchise history. I should remember the name. They still have Marc Andre Fleury coming back. That's unbelievable. And they're, yeah. They're going to get better. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're going to sell. They're going to sell their leading scorer. And then uh, make the playoffs. Yeah, maybe uh, not. Maybe you're right. Unless it, it netted you. Maybe. Pull, maybe, maybe they get Pooley Arby. <laughs> Who has a 30 goal season. That starts in February. <laughs> Does he win GM of the year? George McPhee? Yeah. He might. Oh, my God. If they make the playoffs I in a so. walk. He has in to. In a walk. He has They're the to. best expansion Listen, team ever. I, I yeah. was on pace to be. Thus far, yeah. thus far, dead wrong about the team. I'm blown away. Blown away. We'll see what happens. They're an but expansion on team on their fourth goalie. They should lose every game 12-1. And everyone, and everyone... If, if that had if Vegas was as bad as we thought they would be and they lost every game 12-1, we'd be sitting here going impressed by the one. 
Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's not... Impressed by the one. It's not but, as bad as we thought they were. It's as bad as they should be now. Because on paper, they're still a bad team. They shouldn't be winning these games. So yeah, were the so Avalanche should. a couple years ago, and they finished first in the NHL. Or in the Western Conference. Which now, doesn't make sense. Back to the Oilers for a second. Sorry. You had other options other than trading Eberle. Or you could have traded Eberle, brought in Strom, or traded Eberle, brought in picks, and, and got a, gone out and got a guy like Radulov or Andre Markov. You know, there's your defense problem. Go get Andre Markov. And Shirelli, by his own admission, has uh, did a bad job this offseason. He said that? No, but his actions did. He's already been visibly, or uh, he was reportedly upset with Strom. And his performance you mean, since that trade. Strom has been exactly the guy he was on the island, which is why they traded him. Yeah, but he thought he could turn water into wine with that. And then he signed UC Jokinen, traded him, what, 15 games in for Mike Camilleri. So he's already fidgeting with the moves that he made like a couple months ago. Like, we're barely into winter jacket season. And and this guy is regretting decisions he made. Well, in, in Edmonton, shorts. they started a couple months ago. But, yeah, you're right. Um, Holy smokes! Someone I know on Facebook was in Regina today. Wait. Minus sixteen, blowing snow. Sounds great. Jonathan Goudreau, Johnny Hockey, <laughs> ten game point streak. Hey, Mrs. Dangles got him in the pool. That's pretty cool. Good for him. That's that's awesome. Uh, Kadri's on a seven game point streak. Fun fact. He is. You got a point last night. Oh yeah, he tipped uh, tipped that thing. Three more to tip be as thing. good as Johnny. Wow. According to Alexander Radulov, it's who we, so just, much quieter. we just brought up, um, last year he had a three-year offer, a four-year offer, and a five-year offer on the on the table by about December from the Montreal Canadiens. But he was like, well, we're 30 games in, and I'd like to take a look. And I guess what happened was, in the offseason, not only did Jim Nill call from Dallas, but Tyler Sagan and Jamie Benn and the head coach, Ken Hitchcock, they all called and said, hey, we'd really like you to come here. And Bergevin at the last minute is like, okay, I'll give you whatever money they're giving you after fighting him and fighting him and fighting him on the term. And he's like, well, but they they were first, man. They were in on it. And, you know, for a guy that wanted to stay there, like, I, it's funny. It's just weird. Like, how did <coughs> they, the, Dallas put the sell job in on him, and I, I'm sure it helps that the taxes are way lower in Texas. But... If you're Mark Bergevin, and he was your leading scorer, right? Uh, I might have been behind Pacioretty. Okay. Yeah. So he's your set one-two guy. He's good. That's a guy that you got literally for nothing. You got him from Russia. You paid him some money. This is your opportunity to capitalize on that asset, and you let him walk. What's that Bruno Mars song where he laments being a bad boyfriend? Boyfriend. When I was your man. Do you think should've Mark Bergevin Giles. watches highlights of Radulov and... I should have bought you flowers and bought you borscht. I don't know. <laughs> Russian things. <laughs> you know, just, I think that's just Ukrainian, Russian but okay. Oh, is it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. No, just, you know, that, that climate. I might be wrong. That half of the world there. Right there. <laughs> that half of the... You know, because it's all the same continents. in there. Yeah, uh, so, you know. <laughs> um, I just I just can't help but picturing Bergevin walking around and, like, kicking pebbles on the ground. Thinking about Radulov and just... The streets of Philadelphia from uh, yeah. from Bruce Springsteen playing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he's, 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 outside of, he's, he's outside of Radulov's hotel room with a boombox above us. <laughs> That's In all I'm picturing. <laughs> Question for the two of you: Yes, who's more likely to turn around, Edmonton or Montreal? Edmonton. In fact, I still think the Oilers will. I think. That's, I think I, they both will. I have to be honest with you. Yeah. I don't think Montreal has the talent. I never did. There's uh, no way. Yeah, but Carey Price has been bad. He's injured though, and I don't think Carey Price has been. Has Carey Price been bad, or are the Habs bad? And Carey Price isn't Carey Price because the team sucks. I'm still waiting for Berkshire to write that damn article about how the Habs defense are screwing over their goalies. I would love to know that. Especially Carey Price. I would love to because I don't know the answer to that question, but I would like to know. I have a feeling that Carey Price, first of all, is injured and has been well, most of the season. Yes, there you Second, go. Second, if he were healthy. It would still be a bad team. Yeah, for sure. But, but the, the Oilers and McDavid's been good. Has been the thing that's you been mean glossed. McDavid's over. been McDavid. Yes, yes. There's no. There was a thing. He had a. I guess he had a bad game with a few giveaways, and he was on the ice for a bunch of goals. And oh, McDavid, trade him. No. Oh! And I saw someone on Twitter be like, uh, you know, maybe we should stop uh, beating up the team's best player. 
And yeah, I'm like, that, oh, Phil Kessel should favorite this. That's tweet. always the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Phil it's always Kessel the one. should favorite this. Um, yeah, anyway, interesting stuff going on with the Oilers. Um, I wanted to ask you a couple questions. Have you heard about Hawk Vision? No. Hawk Vision. I assume it's what Freddie Anderson started using a couple uh, weeks ago. No, it's interesting. Hawk Vision, Deadspin did a write up on this. And if you are a Blackhawks fan, you know exactly what Hawk, Hawk Vision is. So apparently in the 90s, get this, Bill Wirtz, who is who is the owner, his son now owns the team. Uh, Bill Wirtz was famous for not wanting to put games on TV because he believed it affected the season ticket holders. He, he didn't think it was fair that they paid admission and that you, jackass, got to sit at home mm. and watch it from your couch. I get that. Even though advertising yeah, sales... Yeah. Um, all the things, sponsorships, all the things that go along with TV advertising that bring in revenue. This is a guy who made his, who is a bi- billionaire. Somehow didn't understand this concept, but anyway. No, if you want to watch hockey, you better watch it live. Yeah. On a screen's not the same. This is the, the discussion we've had so many times. How do billionaires make it? <laughs> They're good at the one thing. They got the one thing. If I if I if I didn't know any better, they they're all idiots. Every single one of them. How did they get that far? I don't get it. So, How didn't they wash out? So this is the beginning of They just went through every net in society? What the hell? I think once you make a billion dollars, you stop learning. Yeah. St- no, and start forgetting. But also Please. remember he'd owned the team since like the thirties, right? <laughs> like it was Jesus. a wash. Yeah. 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 So anyway, Bill Wirtz uh decided that. Instead, because you're you're a jackass for not wanting to come all the way down for the game, that he would charge you pay per view for the game. So imagine like freaking SummerSlam. So imagine <laughs> it's every oh game you got to pay. All right. Wow. How much do you think per game? Think about an 82 game schedule and think about the playoffs. What year is this? 1991, 92. Ooh, that's not bad. I'm gonna say three. I'm going to say two ninety nine. Two ninety nine a game. My guess is ten dollars. Okay, every game. Wow, more than Netflix is now. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. Oh boy! During the Stanley Cup fever days of 1992, the playoff. Oh yeah, because they made the final. The playoff run prices topped fifteen dollars a game. Oh my god! The bracket says approximately the cost of the new of a new Saturn at the time. <laughs> With the car. Oh my F- god. Fifteen dollars a game. A game. That's only about half the price of a ticket. Right. If, if I'm going by uh my ticket stub yes. from and the game idea. in ninety four. He thought you should pay ticket price. Oh my god. So he said To watch <laughs> on your I mean it's nineteen ninety one. Eighteen inch TV? You're yeah. Twenty two? That weighs hundred and fifty pounds. Um which he said at the time, we're not we're not trying to force anyone to buy it. Yeah. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, the writer of this blog is hilarious. They're, the team claimed there were 20,000 Hawk Vision subscribers. What? In return for an investment of about $50, they got a standard broadcast of a hockey game for the playoff run. So I guess in the... Uh, Which means you only have 20,000 people watching Wirtz every kept, game. Words kept Hawk Vision going beyond the 1992 Stanley Cup playoff run, offering to sell access to regular season home games for the next two seasons at an unbelievable hindsight price of twenty nine ninety nine a month. That's an inflation-adjusted $53 to watch one team. Um, now, how much is a Game Center subscription for the year? $25. Now. Holy shit, Bill. Bill, right? Yeah. Or is now, that remember at the time, the 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 uh, the team had Balfour, Chelios, Ronick, Steve Larmer, Steve Smith, Amante. Terry Suter, yeah, Joe Joe Murphy, um, Tony Amante, Brent Sutter, and later on, <laughs> later on, he said, I guess the the Hawks front office used to say, don't. He used to tell the Hawks front office, um, Stanley Cups cost too much money, so he'd sell, he'd just sell. Because oh, Stanley Cups cost too much money to win. And oh, what was amazing, and this is this is kind of sad. So the team tried to honor him in 2007 when he died. Oh, didn't they boo him? And Hawks fans booed him. Good. How, I mean, how freaking sour. Like, how terrible do you have to be to die and people are still like, yeah, man, fuck you. Like, <laughs> I'd love to know what people did uh, when Howard, um, not, what's his name? Harold, Harold Ballard. Ballard died. I think they were probably pretty respectful. They shouldn't have been. Harold Ballard almost sold Frank Mahovlich over a poker game when he was drunk in 1962. 
He was and a, by the way, that s- happens today. With the conversations we were having earlier oh. about GMs going, you know what? That happens today. I, saw, I, was, I was going to at one point. I found a Harold Ballard interview on the CBC archives, and I was going to bring it to the show. Was it the dumb check one? Uh, no, it's oh, not the, he's a dumb check. Not the dumb check one. It's the There's a female host on the CBC, God forbid, in the oh. late 70s. And oh goodness! And he's Congrats talking to her. Holy he's shit. talking to Dick Irvin, who is Dick Irvin and this and this female host, and I forget her name. Forgive me, because it was a year ago that I found this, and, and forty years ago that it happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she is trying to talk to him and has a very good humor about dealing with Harold Ballard, and he's and Harold Ballard is completely ignoring her and going, "Can you please shut that woman up so I can speak to so I can have a conversation with this man?" <laughs> holy shit! And he's just the worst. And I and I I, I am surprised in this city. We kind of look back on that era and we go, we go. Oh well, that was just that time. Ah, Wendell no. Clark, Wendell Clark, Wendell Clark. This Wendell guy, Clark. this guy was a gigantic asshole. He was, and the he's owner embarrassing of the in our lifetime. Yeah, it's embarrassing. It's just embarrassing. Jesus, it's terrible. Now, the <laughs> I know I'm glad that Rogers now owns part Rogers of the Maple Leafs. Part, you know? yes, part. Rogers and Lawrence Tannenbaum. Yes, mm, good old Larry and Lawrence, who I uh, did I. Did I mention that I drunkenly tried to say hi to him at a playoff game? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it was. <laughs> Wait, what? I, I, if I, was, I have any more than two drinks in me, I don't talk to him. I was drunk. <laughs> at, uh, I was drunk at game three. Uh, oh, last year. Yeah, and uh, he was walking by. <laughs> Not game three of the season. Game three of the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. And he was walking <laughs> by with his, this season with his <laughs> scarf, and. Uh, I just tapped him on the shoulder as he was walking oh, by. Oh, you touched I, him? Yeah, I went, you do a great job. <laughs> what? I was drunk. I was drunk. So you tried to talk to him or to you did talk to him? I was just walking the by him and, you know, it was just a talk between peers and I went, you're doing a great job. <laughs> to the guy who owns the Leafs. <laughs> you, how are we just hearing about I this? I thought I said the story. No, you didn't. Oh, well. Wait, so you were in the concourse? Yeah, I was uh, going to meet Mrs. Dangle. Um, I was charging my phone. Hey, Larry! And Larry! Hey, Larry! You're doing a great <laughs> job! <laughs> You're do- and then what did he say? Let me take a selfie with you. What up, 10 out of 10 and Bob? How are you doing? What, what did he say? Uh, nothing. He just continued walking. <laughs> I'm sure I wasn't the only one. Was he, no, no, it was so like, Larry! <laughs> he wasn't with, like, security or anything? No, because I'm alive. So I don't know who he was. He was just with. walking by himself. No, just fellow old rich people. Yeah. <laughs> Adam's like, don't give me that disapproving Hermione Granger look. Steve, how are you still? alive? I'm listening to the books. Yeah. Hmm? How are you still alive? How are you not? In you know why? Because somewhere. Uh, it was the intermission between the third and overtime, so he was probably in a good mood. Mm. They'd maybe just come back. maybe a little bit focused on other things. <laughs> yeah, on the great team that he built. Hey, Lair. <laughs> Do you think he went up to his private box, Jesse, and said? Well, some what fan if just the riffraff came and touched me? No, he probably said, you know, some fan just said I did a great job and I feel good about yeah. that. Yeah. I think that's what he did, right? I agree. He's probably like, wow, right yeah. there. Yeah. Really nice. that young fellow gave me his appreciation. Wow, somebody likes me. Yeah. I'm sure that's what Larry Tannenbaum said. Last, for the last, what, 40 years, he's probably not heard anything good. He, he thought, he probably thought he was 10 and bombing. But no, he's no, 10 he out of 10 and bomb. By being in the playoffs, he definitely probably was feeling down on himself. No, he wasn't scary Larry that day. He was friendly Larry. He was a good guy. Well, all I know is that he needed Steve's approval. Yeah, I think he did. He, he, needed he's my, he doesn't own the Leafs. Like, that's need, not cool. Larry, if you're listening, you shoulder. have it. You have Steve's <laughs> approval. Yeah. Great job. Great job. <laughs> I hope you do that to Lou Lamorello one day. <laughs> no. <laughs> he would yeah, you. and then he just stops dead in his tracks, turns around, grabs me by the head, and kisses me. And then I know I'm dead. <laughs> as, I, as a mandolin plays in the background. <laughs> I, uh... The kiss of death. That's all I need. Uh... Where were we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man. That is great. I didn't know that happened. Uh, yeah. Wow. Wow. I thought I told, I told that story. I was feeling good. I also want to read a quote to you. And this has nothing to do with hockey, but I just found this quote hilarious. So Alex Rodriguez. Oh, we were talking about Harold Ballard being a piece of crap. Alex Rodriguez used to date the uh, the founder of the genetic testing company, 23andMe, which basically talks about your genetics and where oh, you're yeah. from and that sort of thing. I thought about doing that. I think that is super weird. I am not sending my DNA to a stranger. See, Get out of here. Mrs. Dangle says, but like, if the government man or like the man man wants your DNA, like, how hard would it be to get? It's not hard. All they have to do is like find a can of Coke yeah. you drink. Man. Um. Anyway. <coughs> 
23 and me. Here's what I would like to talk about. What would you like to talk about? Well, Alex Rodriguez dated her. And they did a profile on her in uh, the New York Times. <laughs> and I guess um, her mother was, was, was talking about the relationship. So Alex is dating a guy named Anne. Anne's mother is talking about the relationships that she had with Alex. And Anne was not a baseball fan. She's like... Oh, I'm dating a guy who happens to be a baseball player. Maybe you've heard of him. Is Alex Rodriguez, New York Yankees. Like, one of the best baseball players ever. She's not really a huge baseball fan. Anyway. This is the mom or the person? No, this is the person this is who's the per- dating Alex Rodriguez. Yeah, so the okay. person who's dating Alex Follow Rodriguez her, her is the profile. That's who the profile yes, is gotcha, gotcha, on, right? Gotcha, gotcha. Her mother weighs in, though. And she's like, I like Dayrod. He was a very nice man, and her name's Esther. And that's how you know she's a mom. Mm. A grand. There, nobody's, nobody young is, is born Esther. There's no young Esthers out there. Uh, There's no baby's name Esther. Unless it's in a horror film. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, She said, he came from a Hispanic family. We liked them. They were very sweet. He seemed to be genuinely genuinely in love with Anne. But right away, I figured out that this was a mismatch. He had no academic background. (laughs) We couldn't have an intellectual conversation about anything. His main interest in life was something that none of us had ever focused on, which is baseball. He could park himself in front of a TV and watch baseball 10 hours a day. He wasn't even sure he wanted to go on the yacht with Anne because the TV might not be working. I wish J-Lo all the luck in the world. Yeah, J-Lo, good luck with that. You know, you know when you make over $300 million in a career? And maybe it's not good enough? And, and, <laughs> and you can't go on someone's yacht and have an intellectual conversation? Yeah, Those but, are real problems. But Adam, that just, I don't know, is that dumb or noble? You know, because we can't connect, and isn't that what... Love is that is about. what it's about. But that was her mother saying that. It wasn't her. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I know he's very successful, but isn't he boring? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I just thought that comment. It was, I mean, obviously, she's trying to be sweet. but And she saw the mismatch, and she was being blatantly honest about it. I just thought it was funny. It's like, you can't. Sorry, Alex Rodriguez. We know you could also afford a yacht, but you can't have an intellectual well, conversation. Maybe because it's hindsight and they're broken up. It's just a little bit of, a little bit of shade. Just casting a little bit of that canopy over the A-Rod. Could be. Could be. I think someone's upset that her daughter didn't marry A-Rod. Mm, yes. My, <laughs> yeah, but like she doesn't need A-Rod. No, yeah, she definitely she does she not need A Rod. No, I think she's richer than A Rod. <laughs> she founded a company that's like, here are your genes. Yeah, seven like, thousand nuts. times over, she's richer than A-Rod. I think she founded something else too. I'm gonna look her name up. I feel like she did something else. Um uh, that was really amazing. She used she's to pretty, own the Blackhawks. She's and pretty, she charged fifteen dollars a game <laughs> to watch it on your friggin' the TV that's now in your parents' kitchen. <laughs> it used oh, to be in the living room. Oh, she was also married to Sergey Brin, who you might know as the founder of Google. Oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, her I, sister, I, I don't so use Google. Then, then maybe her standards are correct. I don't use Google. Yeah, I, maybe. I prefer dogpile myself. So her mom was an educator. Her dad was a physics professor, uh, the top physics professor at Stanford University. Um, her sister is Susan, and she's the Susan Susan, uh, Susan Wojcicki. I think it's how you say it. It's Polish. CEO of YouTube and former executive of Google. See- <laughs> <laughs> and her sister Janet is an anthropologist and an epidemiologist at the University of California, San Francisco. But you gotta be smart to survive in that family. Sister-in-law because she was married to the dude from Google. Hmm. Sister-in-law. Because no, no, she no, mar- no, no. It's her direct sister who is is now. It's okay. So it's Anne Wojcicki. I think that's how you say Wojcicki. I think so. Anne Wojcicki. Founder of 23andMe, her sister is the CEO of YouTube, and her other sister is an anthropologist and an epidemiologist at uh, University so of California, San Francisco. One of the founders right. of Google, yeah. and her sister. direct sister is the CEO of YouTube. Which I think is they would have. That sounds like some. No, guys, I don't guess. think that's the case. No, no, no. I think that there is. She was. <laughs> I think that there was something with that. That is, is different. I, I think there's a story behind that. In Wikipedia is not showing me. Yada yada yada. <laughs> They're all rich geniuses. <laughs> yeah. Like Larry, 10 out of 10 and Bob. How you doing, Larry? They don't need scum like A-Rod, that baseball playing athlete. Mm. Imagine imagine being an athlete and being the coolest guy in the room your whole life and that a bunch of nerds say, sorry, you can't hang with us on our yacht. It's the nerd dream, isn't it? Yeah. That's like, hello, world's most <laughs> impressive jock. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> Oh, apex of athletic achievement. Not enough. Not enough. Nope. 
Not impressed. That's what happened. Shania Twain. I want to know. That don't did. impress me much. Yeah. Playing in the background. Live because they can afford it. They just bring Shania Twain with them they've to been play waiting, it whenever they're not impressed. They've been waiting for that moment since grade nine. And they finally oh. got, got to tell the jocks to go away. Guess what? <laughs> you take your bomber jacket and shove it. <laughs> Susan Majicki. In, this, in September 1998, the same month that Google was incorporated, its founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin set up office in Wajiki's garage. Before becoming Google's first marketing manager in 1999, she worked in marketing at Intel in Santa Clara and uh, for a management company. So basically, she was with Google before, like when you used to ask Jeeves. Oh like, my God. She was the one, she rented them the garage that they started Google. Oh, she probably has shares. Oh, yeah. Oh my I, God. I still think that's nepotism. Dude, come on. <laughs> You're going to piss off so many people. I, he doesn't mean it. Um, is it nepotism or is it just smart, darling? Huh. <laughs> Here's she, a wad of a thousand dollar bills. <laughs> they just throw it at you. She get Shania Twain to play them off. Wow. No. Uh, yeah, this is her career is pretty freaking amazing. Both this family, like you know, certain families are like, why is every there's not one problem child? There's not one kid <laughs> in this family that went wrong. Like the, 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 that probably, this family. Uh, but she only has her masters. <laughs> they uh, you have to develop an accent like Severus Snape. Did I mention I'm listening to Harry Potter? Have you seen the episode where um, Token brings in all the rich families, all the the, yes, the, all yes. the black families, and yeah. Will Smith kids, they're like, Daddy! <laughs> but Daddy, Daddy, it's $20 million. <laughs> Even you, after taxes, Daddy, it's $12 million. <laughs> you have to do the script, Daddy. <laughs> That's what I, that reminds me of. We're this going family. to play polo, Daddy. <laughs> Uh, this is the most YouTube thing to happen ever. So <laughs> I got to show you this too. So to get verified on YouTube, you need over 100,000 subscribers. Ah! Oh! So Susan Wojcicki, if I'm saying that name wrong, I apologize, created a YouTube channel uh, earlier this year. And she's like, my first video and then advice from creators. And the video is centered around a series of clips from content creators on YouTube giving advice to Susan on how to create a great YouTube channel. Um, she has only 29,000 subscribers and she's verified. And I guess YouTubers got mad at that. <laughs> She's a DO. I just find that so funny. It's such a YouTube. I do. That is the most YouTube thing to get upset about. I here's some fake drama. I'm gonna make a 15 minute video about it walking around my house doing laundry. Like who cares? And She's some EDF people you know playing the background. If I have one subscriber and I'm the CEO of YouTube, you better believe I'm gonna have a verification if check you mark beside my it. subscribers with hers. It adds up to just over a hundred thousand. So I think we should merge channels. And I agree. also, I should get shares. <laughs> but at 1998. Backdated. Pro-rated yeah, shares, yeah. so that way you can be a part of the growth and have Damn millions it. of dollars, billions of dollars. I don't even anyway play baseball. Interesting stuff. I had wow. no idea about any of this. This is really great. Wow. She was ranked number six on Forbes' list of the world's 100 most powerful women. Couldn't even crack the top five. And is currently number 41 on the Forbes list of oh. America's self-made women. Number 27 on Vanity Fair's new establishment of 2015, and was n named number one on Ad Week's, on the Ad Week 50 list of 2013. Wow. Wow. She's only one on one of those. But A Rod, could, I can understand now. Just I, a there, pilot? The, if you want to have an intellectual conversation with a family like that, there's probably like two people in the world that can keep up with that family, right? Who? Maybe. I don't Larry even know. Larry Tennant of Tenenbaum <laughs> and Tesla guy. Elon Musk. Tesla guy for sure. Mm. Elon Musk. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Jesus. Where, um, where were we? A couple we? things I want to mention here. Um, so the, the mail room. Did you bring the bath socks? Damn it! Steve no. did not bring the bath socks. So the mailroom gave me some packages. You were at my house! Ow! <laughs> <laughs> that are over a year old. Because they lost them. Oh, really? So we have some something from Elliot Honda from Honolulu, Hawaii. What? And it's I mean there's what? food in here. However, oh, no. <laughs> it's chocolate, so it's probably oh, turned white. Oh no. No, no, it's still good. I don't know. Anyway, I thought I would... It's just a little airborne. How do, we, it's how do you know it's chocolate good? Because it says chocolate on the package. Oh. It's um, just a little airborne. Because you got because if you ship something across borders, you got to specify what it is. Did anyone have keys or something? Oh, I got my keys. Um, so anyway, while I'm opening this, um, there's a couple other notices that we should read because... Jesse, you open that. I'm going to read uh, I'm gonna read some of these letters. Oh, oh you oh. also have to do a shout-out. Yes. Kenny. Yes. Go. You shut up. Oh, I'm supposed to do that? Well, let me oh, we do these uh, just bring it up on my phone. So we had Ken Reed and Dennis Marouk on recently, mm -hmm. and uh, they were pumping uh, Dennis and Ken's new book, Dennis Marouk, The uh, Unforgettable Story of Hockey's 60-Goal Man. 
and Ken wanted me to say something. Dangle, do you mind mentioning on the podcast this week that Dennis Marouk will be signing books at the Bottom Line Sports Bar, that's 22 Front Street West, from 4.30 to 7 before the Caps versus Leafs game. So whenever that is, I think, I think that's Saturday Repeat night. that. Dennis Marouk will be signing books at the Bottom Line Sports Bar, 22 Front Street West, from 4.30 well, to 7 it. before the Caps versus Leafs game. If you're going to the game that night, drop by. Okay. Well, Ken, I never uh, invented anything, so I can't afford it. Um, dear Jesse, Adam, and Steve, my name is Simon from North York and Toronto, and I've been listening to the podcast for the past two years, probably three now, based on when this letter was delivered. <laughs> oh, no. I enjoy listening to the podcast as it allows me to escape from all the things happening in my life and focus on the things I love the most, hockey. The idea of remaining, uh, uh, the idea of the remaining content in this envelope was given to me by Mr. Montreal, Adam Wilde. Uh, this is a sign of my pre- appreciation for how you guys have done, uh, for, for how you guys have done, how much you guys have done towards all the listeners, whether it's saying something uh, and making someone smile or something as simple as making someone laugh when they're having a bad day. People like you guys are especially important this day and age when all you hear about is people who suffer from mental illness and stress, and it's amazing to have this podcast to use for an escape uh, for everyone to use whenever they feel sad or down or just feel like ha- hearing some good hockey talk. From that respect, I thank you all for helping so many people. I don't, Man, this is way more than we deserve. Yeah. Um, well, year old chocolate? I don't know. I'd say that's right. <laughs> no, that's a different package. Oh. Um, you don't even know how much of an impact you guys have on other people. Along with this letter, you will find three tickets to the Toronto Blue Jays game Saturday, May, May 13th, 2016. Oh, oh my oh. God. <laughs> is that serious? Is it 2016 or 2017? Let me check. The, either no way. way. Oh, no way. No. Seattle Mariners, Toronto Blue Jays, May 13th, 2017. Let me look at the price. <laughs> Let me look at the price. I want to pay him back. Damn. Is it there? Is it on the ticket? I don't see a price. I also understand that Steve may have tickets to this game as a result of the podcast favorite Mrs. Dangle buying a flex pack earlier this season. And boy, did she invest in the wrong season. It, luckily, um, we were able to get rid of most of yeah. them. Yeah. If the Dangles have tickets to this game, I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how close and Caprice and Mrs. Dangle are, but it's just an idea. Anyway, they're close. Uh, anyways, at this point, I'm just rambling. So for every Leafs, Senators, Canadians, Flames, Oilers, and maybe, just maybe, Canucks fans, Jets fans too, uh, thank you for everything you do. For the podcast listeners and go Leafs go. Dude, Simon. Simon, thank you so much. He said, P.S. Adam, you were totally right. Connor McDavid would have made Team Canada during the World Cup. So to my friends and Jesse and Steve, all I can ask is, what's the matter with you? I feel so bad. Any inc- <laughs> Do you not feel bad for for, for I saying, don't. These are nosebleeds. This is a no. Connor McDavid rookie <laughs> okay. card. That's a Connor McDavid rookie card? Let me see this. What? Jesse, look at this. Damn, Simon. It's really nice oh. of you, man. Holy shit. <laughs> it's for me. We're sorry, for Simon. You. Well, I mean, sometimes it can't be helped. Things get lost. That's what happens. It was like the second round of the playoffs during this game. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, <laughs> we should find a way to get back to Simon. Hey, Steve, Adam, and Jesse, I've enclosed my Leafs game pack for the three of you to sign. Because the Leafs are rivals to the Bruins, I don't have it in me Dude, to Adam, want a player's draw autograph. I wrote you, but you still ain't calling. <laughs> <laughs> uh. The three of you have, without a doubt, the best hockey show on earth. Well, that is a stretch. Uh, thank you, Doma. Uh, it's a shame you haven't been picked up on the radio, but I guess it's a good thing because fuck censorship. Uh, I'm a Bruins well. fan. I'm a Bruins <laughs> fan from Wisconsin, surrounded by Hawks fans, obsessed with the Leafs podcast. Strange. I'm glad that you guys keep doing your show even during the off season. Keep up the great work and hold on to this letter if you like. Regards, Brian. Now you know how it feels to lose Phil Kessel. That was a while ago. And I don't know where's the the attached thing that Brian sent us. Uh, I apologize, Brian, but we would gladly send you something back. Oh, my God. So that, again, old letters. I just got, you know, I got these packages, so I thought we should read them. Jesse, what do we got over there? Uh, Why do we suck? Oh, my God, there's so much. Here, can I read this one? Yeah, of course you can. It's a long one. Oh, my God, there's so much probably expired stuff. Oh, Ooh, what? Hawaiian okay, so candy. we got. No, it's Hawaii Sun Strawberry Guava Naturally Favored uh, Flavored Pancake Mix. Oh, right, because this is from Hawaii, you said, mm-hmm. right? What on earth? Oh, Jesse. Oh, Jesse's trying it. Oh, is it okay? Oh, boy. We're both. We're all going to get violently ill. This is Maui Onion and Garlic Macadamias. What? That sounds great. 
Can found. nuts expire? I don't think so. That's this good, makes for a great body. That's a nice. good ass nut. Tastes good. That's that a good one. nut. Did you read the letter? Sorry. Um, the letter is a year in review letter, and it's it's his kid, and um, they finally settled and celebrated. Uh, it it's not really signed by him, so it's basically one of those Christmas letters. And he got a Mario Lemieux bobblehead. Oh my god! That's for you, Steve. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, it's one of those. Uh, oh, there's more. It says Phil on the bottom. From the Honda family. Santa Phil. So that's his Christmas that's card yes. from last year. Santa Phil. Oh my God. <laughs> oh no! One of you gave me a Is there any other letters in there? No, that's. By the way, it looks like he had a great 2016. He had a baby. They settled and found a house. Four years of oh, marriage. Ocean Army. These figures are made from uh, made in 1997. Wow. Holy smokes! I feel violently ill. Oh, uh, pancake mix. I feel violently pancake ill. Pancake mix. Nice. Chocolate macadamia. Now, oh, best buy. Yeah, no, no, it's this is no good. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, that was really nice. You can take that. <laughs> Coffee's probably, yeah, it's probably fine. fine for Jesse to take. There you go. No. Oh, I already offered it to you. <laughs> I don't want it. I'm good. Oh crap! But I so I feel bad, like you know. So anyway, if you've sent us a note, we haven't got back. Oh, Sometimes stuff does worst. get lost in the mail, and this is what happens. So wait, is this open? What's what's this clip for? Let's let's do the press conference. This is a terrible radio, guys. Come on. Is it? Come on. I don't care about the. Put it down. The presser. S D. They Plus weren't excited question. when he said. I know. Them. Oh my god. When Martin plays with Matthews and Marner, is Martin playing on the first line or is Matthews playing on the fourth line? Martin's playing on the first line. I'm going to go with Matthews is playing on the fourth line because that line consisted of two guys who have had regularly played on the fourth line at some point this season. Marner and Martin. I want to know when Matthews is going to pick up his game. I think he's hit a wall. I think Matthews has hit a wall as well. Next question. Yeah, I don't know if I should be eating these. They're really good, though. Jesse, next, next. I think that's our only question. Are you serious? Yeah, I don't know if I should be eating this. Anyway, if you send us a mail, if you send us a mail and it didn't reach us, I apologize. We always try to read the mail out. So that's our only question for today. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening. We'll be back on Thursday. And when did the Leafs play this week? Tomorrow. 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 Yeah. And also, they play tomorrow and then Saturday. All right. See, I don't want to barf in the car on the way home. It's my issue. So. I'm glad that we know that, Steve. I don't think that that was relevant to the conversation we're just having. Glad I didn't barf on Larry Tenenbaum's sleeve. That's probably good. Yeah, that actually probably worked out in your favor. I think this is the best ending to a show we've ever had. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. The best. Sorry that you waited this long to hear this garbage. It's it's okay. The ending of the show is under podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.